Hi, Ben Forter here with Adobe's Platform Evangelism team. And I want to talk to you about Call Fusion 9. Actually, the feature I want to talk to you about is definitely the most exciting uh, and most eagerly anticipated feature in Call Fusion, uh, even though it's not a Call Fusion feature at all. I'm talking about the new Call Fusion IDE, Call Fusion Builder. Now, the Call Fusion Builder is built on Eclipse. Eclipse is obviously a very important, very powerful platform popular in web development. Uh, Eclipse is also the platform that other IDEs are built on, including our own Flash Builder, which means Call Fusion Builder and Flash Builder are designed to work very well together, and we actually recommend that they do get installed together where possible. Now, when you install Call Fusion Builder, um, you'll be presented with two options. It'll ask you whether you want to install a standalone builder or whether you want to install it on an existing Eclipse installation. Now, if you don't have an existing Eclipse or don't know what that means, just take the default option, use the standard install, and we'll install a full Eclipse setup with Call Fusion Builder on top of it. Uh, if you are an Eclipse user or if you're using a Flex Builder or a Flash Builder, then select the option where Call Fusion Builder gets installed as a plugin on an existing Eclipse installation, and that way uh, it'll be installed with your other IDEs ready to use. One of the really nice things about Eclipse is the, the range of plugins that are available. And so while we provide you all the ones you need for Call Fusion, including support for HTML and CSS and upload via FTP, uh, there are lots of other ones out there as well for everything from SQL to regular expressions and more, uh, working with version control systems. You can pick any ones you want, put them in there, and they'll all work together really nicely, one IDE for all of your development. Now, when you install Call Fusion Builder and bring it up the first time, you might see a screen that looks like this. This is uh, this, the standard front end for Eclipse, um, and it gives you a series of options, none of which are particularly interesting to a Call Fusion developer. And so I want to show you how to get started, how to configure Call Fusion Builder for your first use, how to connect it to your Call Fusion server, and how to build your first project uh, so you can start using this tool. Now, when you open the IDE and close the welcome screen, uh, this is not the Call Fusion uh, view. This is the Java view. And you may not see this. You may actually see the Call Fusion view by default. Uh, but I wanted to show you this in case you do end up here. You'll know how to get out of it. Um, as I said, Eclipse is used for many different types of development. Um, and this default view over here starts off in Java. Now, you want to switch this view to the Call Fusion view. Now, in, in Eclipse land, this is known as a perspective. Um, because Eclipse does so many things and is used for so many different types of development, uh, it's, it, it lets you save the views and windows and settings in a perspective, which can be switched as needed. Um, so we're going to go to Window, Open Perspective, Other, and select Call Fusion. And you'll need to do this just once. This will switch the perspective to the Call Fusion view. And you'll see it now has access to servers and other uh, panels and screens that are far more relevant to Call Fusion developers. Now, Eclipse should save these settings. When you quit Call Fusion Builder and come in the next time, it should by default be in the right perspective. If not, you can always switch very easily. And um, what's really nice is if you're building an application, perhaps um, a Call Fusion backend to a, a Flex front end, um, then as you switch between the Call Fusion code and the Flex code, those perspectives can switch automatically for you to make that process really clean and really easy. So the first thing we need to do when working with Call Fusion Builder is tell it how to connect to your server. Now, I highly recommend that you do your development with a local Call Fusion server, the development edition. Call Fusion developer edition is free. Uh, no reason not to be using it. Install it, use it locally. Call Fusion Builder can be used for remote development against a remote server, but you're going to find the overall experience a whole lot better working with a local server. Um, so assuming you know where your server is and you know how to get to it, this panel at the bottom over here shows you your servers. And the first bu button you're going to press is this one over here to add a server. And it will ask you what server you want. We want a Call Fusion server. OK. Now it's asking you for the server name and, and information it needs to connect to the server. So we'll call the server localhost. And the host name will be localhost as well, because I'm working with the local server. Uh, the port it's on, by default, will be 8500 for local server. Uh, the next setting for context root and app server name are only relevant if you've got a Call Fusion deployed on a J2E server. Uh, so I'm going to skip those. Um, once the RDS name, by default, that is admin, and put in your RDS password. Uh, do you want to automatically stop and start the server as you load builder? And I'm not going to do that. Next. Then it needs to know where the root of your server is. Um, so I'm using um, a pre-release version of Cold Fusion uh, 9. So the, the path is actually in a Cold Fusion CentOS folder. By the time you watch this, it should be a Cold Fusion 9 folder. Um, hit OK, and it has the paths. Do you want to, if you're running on Windows and, and a Call Fusion Builder runs on multiple platforms, as does Eclipse itself, if you're running on Windows, you get this extra option saying, do you want to use Windows services to stop and start the server? And I will. And then hit Finish, and it now has defined a server. And you see it already knows my server is running. Now I can right-click here, and I can restart the server, stop. Um, I can launch server settings, the monitors, and, and more. But really, the next thing I want to do is actually create a project to start doing some work. 
Now this panel on the left, the navigator panel, is where your projects are defined. So we're going to go over here, new, and define a new Cold Fusion project. And you'll notice all the new options in there are Cold Fusion specific. A project, a CFM page, a Cold Fusion component. And that's because this is a Cold Fusion perspective, so you're seeing menu options relevant to, to the application you're building. So build a new Cold Fusion project. Now this next step is very, very important. Notice the project location. By default, the way Eclipse works is it creates a, an area called a workspace where it stores your work. And this workspace is not going to be under the web root. Now, this is typically OK. If you're doing Java development or doing um, uh, Flex development for Flash Builder, that's fine. You build a, a project in a workspace. And when you're done and hit Publish, it moves those files over to wherever you want them to be to be able to serve them at runtime. Um, for Cold Fusion, which is uh, not really compiled that way, and it's, it's just in time uh, compiled and executed, that actually will be very awkward. And so what you really want to do is not use the default location, and instead store your project under the Cold Fusion web root or under your web server web root. So we're going to change it from use default location. And I'm going to point it to my web root. And I'm going to make a new folder under the web root. I'll call it my CF9 work folder. And we'll keep the project name I'll call CF9 work as well. And hit next. Now the next thing it wants to know is what server are you going to use? Now, we already defined a server. Uh, but you can actually have Cold Fusion Builder configured to use multiple servers, local and remote servers. Uh, but for this project, it needs to know which server does it actually give requests to for processing. So the server we just defined will show up there under the server list. The rest of the settings we can leave as is. And we now have a working project. Now, the last thing we'll do is create a quick file, make sure it's working. Right click, new, Cold F CFM page. And let's build a new page called index.cfm. And up comes the editor, ready to write some code. And we'll do the Cold Fusion equivalent of a hello world just to verify everything is working. And it puts the end tag in there for me. And hello. And we'll put a quick function in there just to make sure all is good. And then finally, we'll save the code. And to test it, all I need to do is switch tabs at the bottom over here. Now, the, tags, the tabs you have for preview will depend on what browsers you have installed. Um, you'll see different options on Windows and Mac. Uh, but I'll click here to a browser. It'll ask you, do you want to always save the file before changes? This is a one-time question to set a default value. But there you see, there's the result. Cold Fusion has processed the page. And it's processed the, the function. The Hello World is now running, which means that Builder is configured properly. It's connected to Cold Fusion Server properly. We can write code, and we can execute it. And this is just the beginning of what you can do with Cold Fusion Builder. Um, you'll see a lot more about Cold Fusion Builder and Cold Fusion Iron in the future. Uh, to learn more, I, I strongly recommend that you visit the Cold Fusion Developer Center on the Adobe Developer Connection. Thank you.